um, is there any um, cultural or learning habit factors that influence how Indonesian talent adopts AI in general? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I wouldn't say uh, more on cultural part, but more on the demographics. Hmm. So if you look at the age groups and also if you look at genders, there's some interesting insights that we, we are seeing in Indonesia. Uh, if you look at the gender, uh, globally we see uh, the gender balance between the male learners and women learners on Coursera platform is 55 to 45. In Indonesia, it is 51 to 49, which is fantastic, which is almost balanced uh, uh, between the male and female learners and men and women in Indonesia. That's one. But when it comes to generative AI, it's not as healthy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you look at just course enrollments on generative AI, the women learners have only 30% share of the generative AI course enrollments, mm -hmm. which is changing fast because in the last few months we have seen higher growth in women learners who are enrolling in generative AI course and hopefully they'll catch up uh, in the next few months. So that's one on the gender. Second, if you look at the age groups, uh, we looked at the millennials, Gen Zs and Gen X. Uh, in Indonesia, out of the learners who are learning generative AI, 47% are millennials followed by Gen Zs who are 30% and Gen mm -hmm. X and the other generations. And this is where there's a big difference between what we are seeing globally and in Indonesia. So in Indonesia, as I said, Gen Zs are 30% uh, of the learners. Globally, it is 14%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in Indonesia, Gen Zs are like almost like more than two times of the global average, which clearly shows that not only it somebody shows who's the demographic, demographic <laughs> uh, interest and change, somebody mm -hmm. who's early in their career, is showing clear interest in generative AI skills in Indonesia, which is very promising and good to see. Okay, and uh, when we see uh, the website of uh, Coursera, it's very interesting because you provide uh, and you offering like lots of courses from uh, many sectors and many many kind of uh, courses, and we see that uh, you're doing the. Uh, collaboration also with the university, with the government, with the companies. So, uh, can you elaborate more about this and what 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 visions, uh, actually, especially uh, Coursera has in the future? Yeah, absolutely. And generally, we feel that you know talent is distributed equally, mm -hmm. but the opportunities are not. And we want to make sure that we are uh, giving equal opportunity for everyone who is willing to learn and who has the talent. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are trying to collaborate with governments for on the national initiatives with corporates for their employees and for the students uh, in the form of our work with the universities. So for example, in Indonesia, we working, we worked with, uh, in the project uh, Prakarja, mm -hmm. where uh, we were part of Prakarja, where the individuals could take courses on Coursera and develop skills related to IT, business, et cetera, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was a fantastic uh, opportunity for the individuals to build skills in the, sk in the areas that they are interested in. Similarly, in the corporate space, we work with a lot of organizations in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I mean, to just to name a few, in banking sector, we work with Bank Bandiri, BRI, oh, okay. Bank Danoman, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, they are developing skills related to not only generative AI, but also because these are banks, right? So yeah. they, they are into uh, customer dealing, they are into loan processing, they are into fraud analytics and they have huge amount of data so they want to make sure that they are using that data responsibility responsibly as well as using intelligent insights from that data okay. so they are building skills related to analytics uh, cyber security and also human skills okay. i think we focused a lot on uh, generative ai skills yeah. and tech skills but i think equally important in these times is to have human skills in not only well. working mm -hmm. employees but also students and at all levels Okay, so we're talking more about the courses in Coursera. I mean, like you have this a uh, very wide um, courses <laughs> in uh, in uh, that you offer, offers, uh, from in the Coursera. So, which one is the most popular one and uh, generates more income for or revenue for Coursera? Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, on the income part, but the courses which are uh -huh. creating the highest interest. And if you look at generative AI, there are four or five top courses on generative AI. First is AI for Everyone, Generative AI for Everyone, mm -hmm. which is from our co-founder Andrew Wang, which is a very popular course on Coursera. And similarly, there are courses related to Gen AI, which is uh, uh, from Google, IBM, Vanderbilt University. Mm -hmm. So these are on AI. Uh, there are some interesting uh, courses outside of the tech courses which are popular on Coursera, which I'm going to talk about. 
uh, but the first is AI is very popular, followed by courses related to data science, uh, related to cybersecurity and project management. In Indonesia, uh, interesting fact is a lot of courses related to Korean language are very popular. So the first step to Korean by Yonsei mm -hmm. University mm -hmm. is a very popular course on Coursera and probably the top course in Indonesia. Okay, is there any differences between Indonesia and other countries in, in uh, maybe Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific region? Yeah. I mean, in terms of um, the adaptation for learning and uh, for the preference for learning, what's the difference? Uh, I would say more than the difference, there are some uh, similar trends. So in terms of the top topics that learners are interested in, again, AI, data, mm -hmm. project management, cybersecurity. Uh, in some countries, we are seeing language learning as also a preference where the English may not be the first language. So learning English, business English, communication skills, etc. Uh, so that's one. Second, a common theme is also about using mobile app because mm -hmm. this is a generation which is born in, uh, in the internet and born with the mobile. So they are using mobile really well. Uh, and third is there is an aspiration to learn. So mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to what we would see 10 years ago, this generation is quite keen to learn new technologies and also try out new methods of learning. Okay, we're seeing um, a bit of uncertainty right now, especially with the U.S. and stuffs, and uh, we can see uh, the the economic is starting to slowing down. So, mm. is there is there any specific impact for Coursera itself? Yeah, I would say we are keen to help the learners in these difficult times. Right. Mm -hmm. So, in these difficult times, it's easy to sit back and see what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but rather we should be more prepared for the future. And I would say in any difficult times, it is a great opportunity for any individual to upskill themselves because difficult times will not last long. But if you are already prepared, then you are ready for the times when the things start to look up. So it is important that people use this time to upskill themselves, uh, stay abreast with what's important. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a quick example. At the time of COVID, there was a study done of performance of companies uh, in the stock market uh, and there was a correlation drawn with their digital skills oh, okay. and it was found out that the companies which invested in digital skills and which moved to a digital model their stock prices performed better than the other companies mm -hmm. because at the time of covid unless you were in the internet yeah. unless your business model supported was supported by internet you were uh, on a loss See, or you yes. were already out of business mm -hmm. So that's why it is important that we upskill ourselves now so that we are ready for the change that's going to come. Okay.